Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group, we are continuing the August theme of reuse, repurpose and recycle. And this week we are inviting you to make something using natural items. Now that could be fruit, veg, leaves, flowers, feathers, twigs, eggshells, tea leaves, anything of that sort, so quite wide open. So what I've chosen to do today is to use some things from around the garden. So I have some different types of leaves. That was one of a pelargonium and then a fern. This is from a carrot, another little bit from a carrot. This is from a beetroot that's grown in the garden just now. A lovely veining on each side and I'm actually starting to get some some colour off of that so for those of you that eco dye that would be ideal. Lots of leaves, some of these I think have been kicking around since last year but some have started to come off the tree a bit early this year. Uh, that's off the cherry blossom. These are leaves, uh, sorry petals actually, off daylilies. I brought those in a few days ago just to, to kind of flatten them a bit, they've been blown off with the wind. Those are alpine strawberries, that's a very jaggy little leaf. I've got some twigs, I've got some feathers that the birds have kind of, kindly left me from around the garden and I think these are poppy seed heads. Now I did think I'd got most of the seeds out but there is a couple end up on the painting but that's okay. So today I am going to use my gel plate but if you wanted to follow along with this particular project you don't need a gel plate. I'm just simply using this to roll paint out to be able to get the paint onto my leaves and petals etc so that I can then print with them. But what I am going to do, and this is why I like using the gel plate, is I'll use some of these other pieces of paper, and I mainly use tissue paper, just to pick up the image that's left on the gel plate. So, you know, I see this as a bit of a two for one. I get to print with the leaves, but I also get the image that's left on the gel plate. So that's ideal for me. So today I'm going to be creating an abstract, and I'm going to put this on a bit uh, faster because again I spent a while at it. So I'm just using my Arteza mixed media pad. Now this project it could be an art journal page, it could be on canvas, it could be on a smaller piece of paper, it could be postcard size or if you've got something a leave or whatever small enough it could even be an ATC. So I'm using my Pabio paints uh, a selection of colours, I'm holding them up at the screen there, you can pause the screen if you want to see the colours in more detail, but really this does not need these particular paints. I have just pulled these out. Uh, every so often, you know, I like to kind of change my paints up, I just think it keeps things fresh. And just sometimes brings a different dimension to paintings. So I'm using this particular brush just because I want to get a lot of colour down to begin with. So what I want to do today is to create an abstract page. Some would call it semi-abstract because you will still be able to see the leaf shapes by the end of it, but, but you know, I'm calling it abstract. And what I want to do is a bit of a a grey, dull day today, so I want it to be vibrant, I want to use a lot of colour and that's why I've picked these particular paints. So you'll see I've used a kind of blue, now the kind of pink, and I'm just spreading that out uh, quite roughly across the page. These paints mix quite nicely together, albeit it, it's the same as any other colours, you do need to be careful or you do end up creating mud, but you know, I've worked with them often enough now that I basically know how they're going to behave and react and how to, to kind of handle them. So a bit of the red on there as well just now. But as I say, you could use any colours at all. I'm reflecting, I guess, some of the colours that I see around me in the garden. They're introducing an orange. Uh, I don't necessarily have all these colours in the garden, or these exact colours, but you know, I'm thinking of the kind of blue sky, 
the red and pinks of the roses. Later on, I'll, I'll introduce a little bit of uh, a kind of violet purple, just thinking about the heathers uh, and the lavender, etc. So I've got my page done there. I deliberately kept the brush marks in. Uh, and what I want to do now is to start putting some leaf prints down. Now, this time I'm using an opaque paint rather than the iridescent paints, and I'm using this indigo. I could have used black, I didn't want it to be as stark as black, so the indigo felt uh, quite a good colour to be using. I want them to blend into the background a bit, still to be able to see them, but to blend in a bit. So I've taken my fern leaf there, I rolled some paint out on my gel plate. I'm just taking a piece of paper just to really press the leaf down. You'd see I got the outline there and that's part of the kind of two for one. And I'm now going to put that down and I'm just going to get another piece of paper, lay this across the top and press it down and onto the page. Now, as I say, you could just simply lay your paint out on a piece of plastic, even a piece of paper, just to do that. But this is just the way that I, I like to do this type of thing, but you certainly don't need a gel plate for it. Now, I'm taking a piece of tissue because I want to grab that fern print that's on my gel plate. This is part of my two for one. And there we go. I get quite a nice pattern there. Now I could actually, if I'd wanted later on, would be to ground that tissue and then collage it down. But I'm going to save that for another project. So I'm going to show you a couple more uh, kind of leaf prints here. Here I'm taking this beetroot one. It's a bit limp again. I picked this a few days ago because I wanted to try and just flatten it a little bit, but it might have been better picked fresh. Other than the kind of veg leaves, I would tend in the garden to pick things that are going to start to go past or are in the way kind of thing and need to be moved simply because I don't like picking flowers that are or leaves that are still in kind of full bloom or full living mode. So I'm mixing some black and white there because this time I want to give the beetroot leaf just a, a bit of a kind of grey colour. Not looking for bright colours for, for the leaves at all. Just straightening it out a little bit. Again, just taking that same piece of paper just to flatten the leaf down to make sure it's picking up the colour. Just went over that first print. I'm not looking to keep that in any particular way. What I lift up with the tissue paper is, is the image that I want to keep. So the other one is very much just a kind of rough sheet. Some little bits of grey went on there. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to be doing some mark making in a, a little while with some other items, so that will just blend in with that. Pressing it down again, and I'm pleased with that beetroot leaf. Now, this is a, a large sheet of paper. It's A3, so I'm having difficulty fitting everything into the screen there, but trying to show you a bit of the gel printing as well as what's going down onto the page. So again, I'm just going to pick up that beetroot leaf impression just on the tissue paper. And again, I'm very happy with that. And here, just using some little pieces of deli paper just to try and pick up any little bits of paint that's left. It's all pretty much dried in at this point. So I'm going to do another leaf impression, but you've seen me do that, so I'll just jump ahead a little bit. And there's that other leaf print on the left. So I'm now taking another of the Pabio paints. This is quite a, a, a dark blue, and I just want to see how things will print on that. So I'm now taking a couple of the uh, Alpine strawberry leaves and this pelargonium leaf. Uh, 
that particular leaf was starting to die back, that's why I picked that one. As I say, I didn't want to pick anything that was a healthy leaf. And I actually liked the bits and pieces of the, the kind of decay that was starting on the leaf anyway. I was quite keen to see if I could pick some of that up. So these can be a little bit tricky to lay down, but, you know, just going with however it, it turns out. Now this particular leaf didn't turn out quite as well as I had hoped, but I will actually do it again. Now the impression's not bad, but it wasn't quite as clear as I hoped. But there again, as I've said, I'm looking for these to be in the background rather than be stand out. So the strawberry leaves, they turned out pretty well. So I'm just going to try this pelargonium leaf again. And I'm putting the strawberry leaves down again. And I think I add in one of the cherry, bro cherry blossom tree leaves. I'm falling over my words today. I give that a good rub down on the gel plate, put that down, and I'm going to go over that right away because I don't want the paint drying. I want to get good contact with the page. And that's a better one this time. And again, I'll print the other ones. Uh, so I'll just jump ahead a little bit. So I'm now going to try the feather and see if I can get a print from the feather. Again, I'm just going to use that Dyna paint, but this time I'm going to mix it with a bit of white. This will make it slightly more opaque and give me a kind of grey blue colour. Now it doesn't matter if it's not mixed fully in. And I just lay it down pushing it down quite hard and then I'm going to follow the exact same process. Now I thought there maybe wasn't quite enough paint on here. Uh, the feather just didn't seem to pick it up quite as well as I'd hoped for and you can see it's very faint there. So I actually decided to kind of leave that this time, but I do manage to pick up a little bit of a print. But in a sense, today was also kind of about experimenting using some things. I've done a lot of printing with leaves over the years. I've used feathers in my art quite a bit, but today was just about trying a couple of different things. So just mix some black there, it included some of the kind of grey, and I'm really just trying to cover this. Because the head isn't flat, I'm not going to get a great impression of that. So what I end up doing with this is really just mark making. So I'm just lifting the paint and then going over and just putting it in different places. So you can see a slight bit of the head, but it's mainly just getting some, some marks down. And I'm quite happy with that. Next, I'm taking the lilies, uh, the petals from the lilies, and I'm just going to follow a similar process. Now again, I'd lifted these a couple of days ago and had just really put them under a bit of a, a box just to try and flatten them a little bit. It was such a shame, they were beautiful, but we had a bit of a stormy night uh, a few days ago and a lot of the lilies just got kind of blown about quite a bit. So, same process. And I'm quite happy with those. Now, I could go on and on and on and just keep printing all over, but I did want to leave some space that didn't have uh, the leaves in it at all. And again, just picking up 
spots there and I really do like that beetroot one. So I dry this off fully now before I go on to the next stage and what I want to do next is to start adding some more media uh, because this is a mixed media piece. So I'm using some of these pearlescent uh, De La Rowney acrylic inks. Couldn't see the name. Dutch blue. It's a long time since I used these. I went through a phase of using them all the time and I can't remember the last time that I, I actually used them. So much so that the popper, uh, the stoppers uh, are actually kind of choked. So using my little scrubby brush there but change it out for something a bit bigger. Now the blue, the Dutch blue, isn't doing an awful lot so I will actually add something in with a bit more colour in a moment. I do put it a little bit on top of that pink just to see how it changes it. I don't think I've used these inks over these paints before so I wasn't entirely certain how they would turn out. So this is a magenta so very much a bright pink just adding this in. So taking some of the colours that had been in the base but just adding them in again in, in a different media. Going over some of the, the leaf prints because I wanted to start to change the colour of them a little bit. So I did want the kind of muted tone in the background but to start to bring some other colours over. Now I was adding a little bit of water there just to kind of spread it out a little bit more thinly and I'm just trying to move that around just so that it's not in, in one kind of blob and uh, just so that you can't kind of see where one starts and the other ends. So I'm now taking this fluid acrylic in, I think it's described as a, a kind of yellow green. I'm just putting little dots here and there because a little of this goes quite a long way. Uh, you can see that it's quite transparent and I have added some water to it. There's a bit of water on my brush. But what I'm trying to do here is just to add depth to the to the painting. So it will build on top of some of the other colours that sit underneath it. And it actually sits quite nicely on these paints. I was quite pleased with the way it turned out. Adding a bit more there and you'll see that it kind of starts to change the colour of the individual leaves that I've painted. I now take this light yellow green and I think this is just going to give me a little bit different colour but when I put it down I am not so sure about this green. It seems more opaque than the other one and I decide to wipe a little bit off. I want to keep some of it but I start to wipe some of it off. Now there that looks bad but all I need to do at this point is to add a bit more water to spread it out a little bit more thin it down and then I can start to lift it. And actually on top of that beetroot leaf I think it's actually quite nice so I do like that there. But I just didn't want as much of it as I seem to have at that point. But it's always the way with things like this. It's about trial and error and then just working with what happens and kind of trying to come back from that. So you see me wiping that again just knocking it back a bit, lifting some of that paint, spreading it a little bit further there, thinning it out a bit more. And I have to say, I said when I did the review of this Arteza mixed media pad, they really stand up well to, uh, you know, making the pages quite wet. So this time just using a bit of a Bombay ink. I don't know why I keep pulling that little brush out, it's not doing anything. Uh, so get the bigger one and again just starting to spread it about a bit, just using a different uh, medium here. And again just trying to build up depth and colour. So keeping quite closely to my, my kind of base colours, not introducing anything new at this point, although I will later. I think this is a bit turquoise, so matching a little bit with the the kind of blue on the base, but uh, this, this is a lovely colour. I love it. 
course turquoise is one of my favourite colours. Although I see that about so many colours. And again spreading it out and again you'll see that the leaf there is taking on a bit of that colour. So my leaf has gone from being one flat colour to now just taking on little bits of pieces of different colours. So spreading that well out, I want it to look blended in with the rest of the painting. I don't want anything kind of sticking out. And just gonna Sometimes with this it's, it's about just looking for balance in the painting and just looking at where it might benefit from a little bit more of the same colour. And as I've probably said a hundred times before, and maybe more, you can never tell when something like that this is done. You can only get to the point yourself where you feel that's it, that's sufficient. But you know, with many of these things, I could go back time and time again and keep adding. And even where I get to today with it, I may still go back at some point in future. So again, giving it a good dry. I'm now taking this violet, which is a transparent colour. Again, it's the PBO, and I'm just going to start to add some of this in here and there. And with this one, I was just thinking about some of the colours in the garden. One of the plants I've got in particular is, is a lovely kind of, it's not the sh shade exactly, but it's a lovely kind of purple violet colour. So just trying to reflect, you know, the fact that I'm using natural objects just trying to reflect kind of what's around me. And just a lot of brushwork, quite fast brushwork. I have got it on at speed, but you know, I was kind of working quite quickly, just blending these colours out. And I'm loving the way that the light hits them. So thinking about what next, and I've decided that what I want to do now is a bit of mark making. So I'm going to take my twigs and just see if I can get some marks down on the paper. It's still feeling a bit like a background just now, so I just want something else to start to bring a bit of life to it, a bit of energy to it. So I'm just using this bit of broken twig and just using it to create some little marks on the page. They don't all have to be even. I lift a little bit out the centre of that. But I'm just going to go around the page making these sort of marks. Now the twig had a bit of a kind of Y shape to it, so I was seeing if I put more paint on it, if I could get a different effect fact that it was round and kind of narrowed meant that I wasn't getting a lot of effect from it. So I go back to one of the, the kind of stems from the poppies and I just want to kind of drag that across the page. I'd obviously used it with black in the background and now just going to take that on a bit. Just looking at different effects, there's a couple of pieces there I'm less keen on so take it off a bit and again you'll see me put some water on that and it just lifts it a little bit. And you know, if you're quick enough with acrylics, then you can do that. If it had dried, then I would have just made the most of it somehow. But I just feel that by adding the white marks, just starting to do that mark making, it starts to bring a different feel to it, a different energy. So what I'm going to do now is just take that colour that was in, in the base, that kind of pink. I want to bring a little bit more of that out. I'm just going to rub it along the stick here with my finger and again just see if I can make some marks with it. 
doesn't really matter too much how they turn out just wiggling the stick a little bit on the page just to try and get the mark and at this point I'm liking how it's going but feeling that it needs something more so again taking one of these deal around the acrylic inks again this is in a kind of purple and I'm going to start to to begin with I was going to dot it on but I decide that I'm actually going to try and do some splatters so just getting my fan brush to do this and it's quite subtle, the colour's quite subtle because of course it's, it's mirroring a lot of the colour that's in the background anyway. So you have to look quite closely to see it. And I will hold it up to the this camera in just a second and you'll see it a little bit closer. Wiping it off me because it is a messy process doing splatters. But there you can see it, as I say, quite subtle but it's there and I like it. So I decide that I probably need some more splatters. So I'm going to take the, I think it was the, yeah, I change it out. I was going to take the turquoise, but I take this, I think it's crimson red. Again, they'd been the kind of red underneath. So, you know, I'm not introducing a new color, albeit that this is kind of brighter and just starting the splatters with this. I did actually put a shirt on in between times to try and protect my t-shirt because I've had so many t-shirts ruined with doing splatters. So I got my paint shirt on. So I l I'm loving that red, just those little pops of red across it. I'm now going to take an orange because the red on its own isn't enough so I'm going to add some orange splatters in now. And for me the abstract it's it's about the leaves the leaves uh, being the kind of background of the garden but you know such detail but the little splatters reflecting the pops of colour that's around the garden so having kind of abstracted it to get those, to introduce the flower colours, but just as splatters. Now I'm going to do a bit more this time with white, because white always makes paintings pop. I'd obviously had the bigger marks on there, which I was quite happy with, but just wanted a bit more by way of splatters. So feeling at this point that it probably needs a little bit of black. So I'm taking the end of my feather, holding my shirt sleeve up because the paint on there is still quite wet. And I just start by making lots of tiny little black marks around the page. And just showing you that in a little bit more detail there. And I will in a moment go on to use a little bit more of the that kind of quill piece of the feather just to make some slightly bigger marks. And just trying to be careful so as not to smudge any of the other splatters that are on the page. And so coming towards the end of this. So Nina will of course have a video this week so please go over and check out see what she's doing and if you're in the Mixed Media Emporium I look forward to seeing what you create with natural objects. If you're not in the Mixed Media Emporium but would like to join then there is a link in the description box below. I had fun doing this. I hope you enjoyed watching me create it. I don't know if it will remain like this in future, but I think I'll sit with it a while before I decide what else to do with it. So, as always, uh, thanks so much for watching 
and stay safe, take care, look after yourself and hope to see you next time. So thanks for watching, bye for now.